Well, the countdown is on. We are officially less than a week away from the NHL trade deadline. And today, I'm going to tell you why I think the Preds need to go all in. Plus, the rumor mill is kicking up, and apparently the Preds are looking at a couple of players. But you might be surprised who. We're going to break down those rumors, see if they can potentially be a fit for the Nashville Predators. And Preds play the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight. We're going to break down that game and also... Take a look back at the five years since the Predators and Penguins played each other in the Stanley Cup final. All coming up today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Predators, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com. Normally, I have a partner in crime, but my dear friend Ann Kimmel is taking a well-deserved day off so she can have some fun with some friends in town. Way to go, Ann. Um, we also do want to mention that today's show is brought to you by our friends at Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Uh, also, a quick apology before we get started for not having a show yesterday. Uh, basically, what had happened is we recorded this, we sat down, we went to edit, um, and we found out that half of our audio had dropped out due to some connectivity issues. So, yay, technology. Give it the old Carey Price, well, whatever, little fist pump there. Yeah, uh, but hopefully today's show works well. And, uh, of course, we'll have some bonus content for you next week when the actual NHL trade deadline comes along. Speaking of the NHL trade deadline, we are now less than a week away. Of course, it is next Monday, March 21st. And, um, yeah, I mean, from everything we can tell – it doesn't sound like the Predators are going to sell. Now, not, that's obviously not a big surprise, right? I mean, the Predators are still firmly in a playoff spot. Uh, they've played very well over the past week. They seem to be trending in the right direction, and they have a couple of players, namely Philip Forsberg and Matt Duchesne, on just flat-out earth-shattering goal-scoring paces right now. So, yeah, I mean, granted, David Poyle over the past – 20 years or so that we've known him doesn't like to sell players. I mean, I think there's only one or two trade deadlines that I can remember that he's really been like, no, we're going to have to sell some of these guys for future assets. Um, and we, we saw it the past couple of years where the Predators were in much worse shape in the NHL playoff race than they are right now. And uh, they didn't tear it down. In fact, they stacked up, they added a few pieces and went for it. Um, and so I don't think that was really a surprise. The way Philip Forsberg right now is kind of making David Poyle's decision for him, isn't it? Like, you can't trade Philip Forsberg right now. He is your best player, night in and night out for the Nashville Predators. Um, and, and so you, you can't trade him. What Think of what that does to the locker room. So I think Philip Forsberg kind of made this decision for David Poyle. Now, that brings up the question of what the Nashville Predators should do. Because the trade deadline is still coming up. And if you're not trading Philip Forsberg, you got to at least kick the tires on some other people, right? And that made me think. Nashville Predators, to me, have to be aggressive at this trade deadline. I said all in in the cold open and thinking to that to an extent. I think the Predators really do need to go close to all in. Now, I'm not going to say let's trade Philip Tomasino or, you know, Askarov and a bunch of first rounders for, you know, somebody who's going to be on your team for three months. Um, but I do think David Poyle has some room to be aggressive. And I'm going to start with the reason why. When you look at this Nashville Predators team, you look at what they got. 
They have a goaltender in UC Soros, first and foremost, who, when he's really on fire, is maybe top three goalies in the league right now. Somebody who can absolutely steal a playoff series for you. Almost did that last year against Carolina. You look at the rest of the Predators roster. Uh, they're top four right now. Roman Yossi is having a better season than he did when he won the Norris Trophy. Matthias Ekholm hasn't exactly shown up on the score sheet a bunch this year, but you watch the way he's playing, and defensively and hockey IQ-wise, this is one of his better years in quite some time, too. And then you have Dante Fabro playing the best hockey of his career and Alex Carrier, who's coming out of nowhere. So you have a top four that's capable of stealing a series. And then you look up front. I mean, we, we talked about it earlier. Philip Forsberg, right now, one of the hottest scores in the league when you break down his past, you know, 10, 15 games. Same for Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne, um, barring something catastrophic like an injury or an incredible drop in play, is going to have the best season of his career. And remember, he had a lot of good seasons before this. That's why the Predators gave him – eight million dollars a year for eight years so that's saying something that somebody like him is able to have the best year of his career and then same thing for you know look at some of the other guys Mikhail Granlin having a big bounce back year Ryan Johansson and then look at the depth Tanner Janot and the herd line has provided excellent scoring this year you got a fourth line who has proven that they can win games with some clutch goals with some out of nowhere performances and play good two-way hockey while doing that. So I look at that and I look at the past couple of teams that have won a Stanley cup, Tampa, uh, St. Louis, Washington. Those are all elements of teams that have won the Stanley cup. The predators have that. And I know a lot of people are saying, let's like, well, I don't really see much in this team. Yeah, they may overachieve this year, but you know, they're just going to fall off to earth and we'll be better off just building from the ground up. I disagree with that. This whole debate came up last year. Um, I think if you have a chance to win a Stanley cup, you have to go for it. I mean, what, what would you rather have? Would you rather have, you know, go kind of all in and win a cup have something your city can remember for the rest of their lives? Or would you rather have five years of mediocrity with the process of maybe being good? That's the key for all these rebuilding teams and the people who are like, oh, well, let's tear it down, get some draft picks, and then we'll be contenders in five years. There, there's no guarantee that that ever happens, folks. I mean, there is teams that pulled the trigger on a rebuild 20 years ago that have not even come close to contender status. Um, I mean, look at the Edmonton Oilers. They started the rebuild back in 2007, 2008, and they wound up with a once-in-a-generational player. You can maybe argue two once-in-a-generational players. You got four first-round draft picks. And would you argue that they're any closer to the cup? They've made it past the first round once, once in those years starts since they rebuilt. I mean, they sure they have Connor McDavid and they're probably close just based on that, but there's zero guarantee. There's zero guarantee. And so I do think if you're the Nashville predators and you see, you have the elements of a team that can win a Stanley cup, and you see how well some of your players are playing right now, you have to maximize that. You have to maximize that if you're David Poyle. And so that's what I think he's going to do. I think he really is going to kick the tires on some of these bigger names that are on the market. Claude Giroux, um, although it, it sounds like he Nashville wasn't exactly on his list of teams he wanted to be traded to. Sounds like he kind of wanted to go to Colorado. But if I'm David Poyle, I'm at least seeing what what that's like. I'm at least seeing if there's a chance that happens. Um, you, you know, there's some other guys out there. Brock Besser. A lot of people think maybe it's going to be until um, the draft, at least before he gets moved. Um, so, you know, that may open more teams up to looking for a hockey trade. 
possibly, but if the predators make an offer that sweeps them off their feet, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, but it's worth taking a look into to see if he's somebody who can help the team right now. Um, and then you have just big name guys like Phil Kessel out there. He, he's yeah, not the same player he was five years ago, but he has a habit of being really good in the postseason. Uh, unfortunately, the Predators found that out firsthand uh, back in 2020, that little COVID shortened bubble hockey season. He proved that he can still do damage in the playoffs. I mean, you look at his stats, one of the best playoff performers of all time. If you're just basing it on a, like, like the volume of points he's done in the playoffs, one of the best of all time, Phil Kessel. And he's somebody that I think fits in really well with this current team. Um, so there is a lot of people out there that I think can absolutely help the Predators, including some of the bigger names. And so David Boyle, I think, needs to do his due diligence in at least trying to get, I think, your first round pick this year should be at play. I think maybe a future high pick next year should be at play. And yeah, you know, maybe you don't trade Philip Forsberg. Maybe he enters the deadline without a new deal. Maybe he tests the market. But I really do think that another playoff run with Philip Forsberg, especially the way the Preds are playing right now, is worth more than any return you can get at the trade deadline for Philip Forsberg. Any return. I think it's if you have a chance to win a cup, if they win one cup and never, you know, win another one in the next 20 years, I think that's worth it. I think that's worth any anything that you're going to get for number nine at the deadline. So that's why I think David Poyle needs to realize that and go all in or close to all in. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the players the Preds have been linked to because there have been some new rumors pop up in the past couple of days or so. Not the type of players you're probably expecting. We're going to get into that second plus look ahead to the Preds showdown with the Penguins tonight. But first, though, want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Folks, my favorite time of year is about to kick off. Yep, college basketball tournament season. Uh, from all the latest odds, contests, and player props, Bet Online is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info this tournament season. Also, Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your scores, podcasts, and news throughout the tournament. But not just basketball, Bet Online is your number one source for all of your information needs from hockey to baseball, which is starting back up to UFC. They even have some of your favorite Vegas casino games on hand so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action bet online where the game starts you know we've been talking about the nhl trade trade deadline uh today uh and we got something special next monday at 3 30 eastern locked on fantasy hockey is going to have a live deadline reaction show we'll be bringing you all the on ice fantasy and betting analysis you need from our host Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone, with appearances from our roster of local team experts. Yours truly might pop up if the Preds do anything. Uh, we are also going to have our own live show after the deadline, so stay tuned to that. We'll give you more information on timing in just a second. But yeah, a uh, lot of lot of big things coming up this week, trade deadline wise. So let's talk about some of the guys the Predators have been linked to. Um, so according to the fourth period who we know does a really, really good job with trade rumors and uh, all the buzz and gossip. The Preds are linked to, right now, three defensemen. Yeah, the defensemen. Not kind of the, the position we thought the Preds might go all in on this year. They are Calvin DeHaan of the Chicago Blackhawks, Justin Braun of the Philadelphia Flyers, and Robert Hogg of the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. Interesting mix. Interesting mix of people. Uh, you know, you look at Calvin DeHaan and uh, the joke about David Poyle just liking tall slash bigness kind of leaps into your mind, right? Um, maybe not kind of the best uh, all-around skill set would be the nice way of saying that. 
Um, but, you know, he is a solid stay-at-home defenseman. You could kind of see him maybe, you know, maybe fitting in a little bit. You know, do you think of him maybe as an upgrade of Ben Harper, if that, if it comes to that? Although Mark Borowiecki and Matt Benning have been really, really playing well. Um, Justin Braun, that's an interesting name. I think that jumps out at you. Um, he's definitely a de depth defenseman at this point. I think a lot of Preds fans remember him from his time with the San Jose Sharks uh, during, you know, kind of some of their arrivals in the the mid to late two thousands. Um, he's a he's a good mix. He's a veteran. He's thirty five years old, but I think he is somebody who still has a little bit of offensive pop. He's got fifteen points this year. Um, he's been playing mostly on Philadelphia's bottom pair. Um, and you know what, when you look at kind of his numbers and you think about how bad the flyers have been this season, it makes sense. Like he has actually been playing pretty good, um, as a defenseman for a bad team. So I definitely think he still has the instincts and the IQ, um, to maybe help the predators in the stretch run. And again, Borvietsky and betting have played really well. You don't really want to see a lot of them out of the lineup. I would say if there's anybody, you maybe would be looking for maybe a six defenseman upgrade. And Braun is somebody I think pairs very well with Matt Benning because Braun is somebody who still has a little bit of decent offensive instincts. Um, you know, he's certainly not going to be Roman Yossi and score, you know, 70 points in a season or anything like that. Um, but I think he's somebody that can add a different dimension to that bottom pair if needed. He is a very good puck mover. Pairing with somebody like Benning, who's a very underrated skater and a very good stay-at-home defenseman. I think you wind up with a bottom pair that you can pretty much throw out there whenever you want. And the Preds already do have that uh, when Borvietsky is healthy. You know, obviously, Boro and, and Matt Benning play a lot of big minutes late into games. Uh, against important teams and important stretches. So I, I do think the Preds have that. I think this might just be a little bit of an upgrade. Justin Braun is somebody I can get sold on. Um, Robert Hogg, maybe. I, I just don't really see a lot out of him. Um, but certainly, I think a lot of potential and has played decent for buffalo this year which is very hard to do when you're in the buffalo sabers organization um i just look at the premium that defensemen have gone for so far i mean we we've seen it all over twitter ben Chiro might get a first round pick from the montreal canadians this year uh we saw josh manson get traded for a second round pick and a prospect to colorado yesterday so if you're the Nashville Predators, you know, how much are you willing to spend on somebody like Robert Hogg, who's decent, but maybe not a game changer? Justin Braun, I think, is somebody that can wind up maybe being a little bit cheaper, maybe a third or fourth round pick, um, maybe, you know, sort of a middle of the pack guy in Milwaukee right now or a prospect who's maybe down the ladder a little bit, um, you know, a combination of that. We'll, we'll probably get that. So um, of those guys, I would say Braun. Braun is probably the one I'm most looking forward to. But of course, we still have six days to go before the deadline. It does seem like a lot of teams are kind of waiting for that first big domino to fall. So, you know, who knows if, if one big trade happens, if that kind of shakes things up. Maybe he gets teams a little more aggressive, maybe a little bit more interested. Um you know, there's also the possibility that a lot of teams might just be content with their roster and maybe don't want to spend future capital on somebody who's going to kind of be a fill in player for one year. Um, so we'll see. This is going to be a very interesting trade deadline so far. It's been very quiet. Um, you, know, you kind of get a sense that a lot of the bigger names on the market who still have term left or are RFAs that kind of stuff is probably going to get settled in the off season. So I'm not sure if we're going to have any groundbreaking deals this time around, but it's kind of worth checking into. So yeah, uh, should be a lot of fun stuff to look forward to on Monday and talk about. It's going to be very interesting uh, to see what the Preds and some of these other teams around the NHL do. 
Um, speaking of the Preds, they play the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight. Break down that game in just a second. But first, I want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local auto chain uh, or your chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So why bother walking into the store when you have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket? Rock Auto helps you save time and money. So why would you want to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a dealership when you can get a big discount on rockauto.com? It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are relatively low for every customer. They got everything you could ever need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet and upholstery. So right now, Go to rockauto.com and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked in in their how did you hear about us so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Well, tonight, the Predators take on the Pittsburgh Penguins at Bridgestone Arena. It is a 7 o'clock central puck drop, and this is kind of an interesting one, isn't it? The Pittsburgh Penguins right now... It seems like every single year we enter the season, it's like, okay, this is the year. This is the year that Penguins kind of fall off of their pedestal a little bit. Um, You know, Crosby and Malkin aren't spring chickens anymore. Uh, You know, they're having to rely on a lot of depth players. We're kind of expecting them to turn into the next Blackhawks. And frustratingly, as a Preds fan, that never seems to happen It never seems to happen. The Penguins are always contenders year in and year out. And it's so frustrating, especially this year, because you look at who like the big stars have been for the Penguins. And it's like, why are, why is like Brian Rust and Evan Rodriguez suddenly scoring at like world eater paces? Brian Rust missed uh, just under 20 games this year due to injury. Um, if he did not miss those games, if you break down the pace he's scoring on right now, his scoring rate, he would be top six in scoring in the NHL if he didn't get hurt. I mean, that's that's just the sign of a good franchise. And of course, Crosby, um, another great scoring pace, even though he's missed a lot of time this year. Um, Evgeny Malkin, who missed a big chunk of the earlier year, he's starting to find his stride. But this is a little bit different of a Penguins team this year. So we all know, you know, Crosby, Malkin, you know, some of the big guns that always seem to score for the Penguins. Um, They always seem to be like the flashy team. That's not how they're winning games this year. They're winning games on defense. Their defense has stepped up, which is crazy because you think of like Chris Letang is kind of like the old guard, maybe a little past his prime. And to an extent, that's true. Um, but he has played really, really well this year. Um, John Marino, that man is one of the most underrated defensemen in the NHL. And it was an absolute coup that the Penguins were able uh, to get him and play as well as they did. Um, yeah, and then you just look up and down the lineup. You know, Brian Dumlin, another very underrated guy who's played very well. Uh, Marcus Pedersen is another guy who has really stepped up over the past couple of years and kind of filled in that top four role and then goaltending this year, Tristan Jari. Remember uh, after a couple of playoffs in a row, a lot of people said, Oh, Jari's Jari's done. Uh, The Penguins bet on the wrong horse. He's, he's not going to be, um, I guess the franchise goaltender moving forward. Jari is having an unbelievable year. And if it wasn't for Igor Shesterkin, maybe low key would be getting some love right now um, for the Vezina trophy. I just don't think anybody is going to be able to beat uh, Shesterkin at this point. That includes UC Saros, but yeah, you, you look at what Jari has been able to do Nine twenty-two save percentage four shutouts this season. Um, and he's, it hasn't been easy. He's facing, you know, a decent number of shots in a couple of games, but the defense has also been able to step up and give him games where he's only, you know, having to stop 20, 23 shots a game. So it's been a very good team effort from the Penguins, and it's very interesting. 
to see how this is going to turn out tonight. Um, because you look at the Predators and you look at the pace guys like Roman Yossi have been on, Philip Forsberg, Matt Duchesne, and you kind of have to wonder. It's like, you know, this is this is going to be the test to see if how on fire they are. Because if they can score like they've been scoring and they can do it against a really good defensive team like Pittsburgh and squeak out a win and a much-needed two points – I think you really do have something. I think that gives you confidence that, yeah, these are just really good players on a really good run and not just beating up on bad competition or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think tonight's a good proving ground for the Nashville Predators and particularly some of the guys who have been on scoring hot scoring runs. Uh, so we will have to see what that does. Of course, whenever anybody mentions the Pittsburgh Penguins, everybody always wants to think back on 2017 of course the preds and penguins played each other in the stanley cup finals that year it's hard to believe this is five years right it's this summer is going to be the five-year anniversary of the preds making it to the stanley cup finals predators have changed a lot since then you kind of think of the stanley cup finals a lot of people were just happy to be there um i remember when i i had lived out of town at this point, but I remember coming back to Nashville for games three and four. I don't think I've ever seen the city of Nashville buzz like that before. And I am including the Super Bowl. I am including the Titans Super Bowl back in 2000. Like, yeah, that was kind of the new thing, but the way the city felt and the way everybody was talking about hockey and just the massive camaraderie that I saw up and down the city, like that is something I had never experienced in the city of Nashville before. And it was, it was incredible. Like it was incredible to see. And I think there are going to be very few things going forward that can probably top that. I'm thinking obviously if the Titans make the Super Bowl again, that's, that's going to be a big thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was one of the top moments of being a Preds fan was that series. And it's it changed the city, though, in a little bit, because the expectations for the Predators, they got higher. They got a lot higher. And I think you kind of saw a lot of the attitude shift from fans. You know, a lot of people, you think about the old school Predators and it's just like, hey, you are able to pull off a win against a, you know, a team like Detroit, Chicago, you know, and it feels like your team just won a championship. Um, and then you circle back to now and it's like, yeah, if you beat, you know, a good team, but you're getting outshot by 20 shots or whatever in the game, then it's like, oh, well, this team is getting lucky, blah, 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 blah. They're not as good as they think they are. They're going to come crashing back to earth. Um, and I think part of that was just that a lot of the fan base, this is not a dig at the Nashville Predators fan base because I'm part of the Nashville Predators fan base. I love you guys. Um, but I do think there's a large number of people who kind of became diehards either at or kind of before the, the Stanley Cup final. And I think they don't really appreciate how much the Preds had to work to get to that point. Um, you know, I think back to the earlier years where we were just happy to have a team, you know, and we had, you know, Cliff Rodding was our biggest superstar. And uh, I remember those days whenever anybody talks about like, oh, we need to tear it down, re rebuild. They didn't have to go through the fear of losing your franchise in 2007, 2008 where even as the season went on and, you know, the NHL made it clear they wanted to keep the team in Nashville um, while the city was only, you know, only the, you know, the arena was only 80% full. A lot of nights, you know, we had a lot of games where it was only like 12 to 14,000 fans. Um, I don't think anybody kind of remembers those days. I don't think they remember kind of the struggles of being a Preds fan. Um Still, like, I remember 2011 when the Predators got to the second round and just came close to beating Vancouver. 
like just to be in the conversation of giving Vancouver the toughest test was like, you know, superstardom. Like that was like, oh yeah, we we've made it. Like what a fun season. We're gonna remember this forever. Now it's like, you know, if if you don't get past the second round, it's you know, your team sucks. You need to tear it down. You need to rebuild. And there is truth in that. The franchise has to grow. We all know the franchise does need to grow. Um, and you can't have the same expectations in year 25 that you did in year 10. But I do think that the Stanley Cup final spoiled some people. I do think it spoiled some people because I don't think people remember the blood, sweat, and tears it took to get to that Stanley Cup final. Um, for the Prides, you know, maybe they went a little bit too Hollywood after the final. I mean, we, we saw – we talk a lot about identity this year and how the Preds are kind of reminding people of the Preds of old. Um, you know, you see them bringing in, uh, you know, after that Stanley Cup final run, you know, a little less pretty, a little more – or a little more pretty, a little less gritty. Um, that's something to, yeah, I mean, that, that's something to think about. I think they're getting back on track. I think they've kind of had their moment where it's like, you know what? We are one of the top teams in the spotlight. Everybody wants to watch our games. We're going to go after all of these big name guys, not worried about how they fit. But I think they've taken a step back over the past year and kind of realized what made this franchise great and how they're going to be great going forward. And I have confidence in saying now that I think the Nashville Predators are closer to a Stanley Cup than they were any time in the past five years since that cup since that cup run. Yeah, and that's that's including the President's Trophy winning season too. Because I think the Predators have direction. I think the Predators know what their identity is. They know the type of players that are going to help them will get to a Stanley cup the way they want to get there. And I think they're better off for it. And I really do believe in this year's team. This, this sound bite might bite me later on, but I really do believe that this year's Nashville predators are going to be a team to watch out for. We'll have to see, you know, again, it starts tonight against the Pittsburgh Penguins, seven o'clock central puck drop. Uh, I've been your host, Nick Morgan. You can find me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Also, be sure to follow the show at LO underscore Predators. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like, share, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the show or if you have any topics you want us to discuss in a future show. That's going to do it for us today at Locked on Predators. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And we'll be back tomorrow and we'll have some Preds Penguins recap. We'll see you then, everybody. Cheers.